Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. This package would convince 49ers to trade Brandon Ayak to Commanders. Trade rumors have swirled around San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayak recently. Some rumors have linked Ayak to the Washington Commanders. This is what Washington would have to offer to pry Ayak from the Niners. Despite all of the trade rumors surrounding Ayak, the best-case scenario for both sides would be to sign Ayak to an extension that would keep him in the Bay Area for the foreseeable future, whether that happens still remains to be seen. Ayak said recently that if he is not on the Niners next season, the team he would most want to play for is the Washington Commanders. This is a bit surprising considering the Commanders were last in their division last year. However, Ayuk mentioned freshly drafted LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels as a big pull factor in him wanting to play for Washington. The number two overall pick in the NFL draft and former Heisman Trophy winner certainly has a lot of talent, so it makes sense why Ayuk would want to catch passes from him. What would it take to get a deal like this done, though? The 49ers have remained adamant that they want to keep Ayak, so they would have to get an offer that completely blew them away. The only way would be if the commanders offered up wide receiver Terry McLaurin and their 2025 second-round draft pick. Yes, that is a lot for Washington to give up. However, the Niners should not and cannot give Ayak away for cheap. They are still in win-now mode and they need to do everything they can to maximize the current potential of this core group of players. McLaurin is a very solid wide receiver who could slide right in and be effective in head coach Kyle Shanahan's offense. The pass catcher has been remarkably consistent the last three seasons, starting every game hauling in 75 to 80 receptions for 1,000 to 1,200 yards and four or five touchdowns. The second-round pick may seem like a lot to give up, but like I said the Niners would have to be wowed by the offer, and they would also be taking on McLaurin's sizable three-year $68 million deal he signed in 2022. The most likely scenario is that Ayuk will be a Niner this next season. But if he were to be traded to the Commanders, it should come at a very steep price that still allows the 49ers to be competitive in 2024. Jets Brees Hall eyeing Christian McCaffrey leap in year three. There is no doubt that Brees Hall is one of the best weapons that the New York Jets have, but his ACL tear from his rookie year impacted his first two seasons in the NFL. With the Jets set to take on the San Francisco 49ers in week one of the 2024 NFL season, Hall has goals to ascend to the level that Christian McCaffrey is at right now. McCaffrey's the best in the league and, to me, he sets the standard, Brees Hall said, via Rich Simini of ESPN. We're going to see him week one, and we're playing against some of the best linebackers, so for me it's exciting just to see where I stand and really let everybody see my full talent now that I'm healthy. If you go on my YouTube and you look at Christian McCaffrey and my history, you'll see I wanted like 10 videos of his highlights and everything. Hall is definitely aiming high, and rightfully so. He has flashed a lot of talent in his first two seasons with the Jets, when he does get the ball. Hall made a huge impact in his rookie season before suffering his torn ACL on the road in Denver against the Broncos. It took him a while to build himself back up, but he was just under 1,000 rushing yards on the season in 2023 as well. Now, Entering his second full season after the ACL tear, Hall feels back to normal. I feel like I'm back to my old self, Hall said, via Simini. Hall will undoubtedly be a big part of the Jets' offense this season. Aaron Rodgers will have Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams to throw to, with Tyler Conklin being a solid option as a tight end as well. But coming off of a torn Achilles, it will be helpful for Rodgers to have an explosive back like Hall to take the pressure off a bit. Expectations are high in the building for Hall. I don't think people realize or appreciate the road it takes to recover from an ACL, Jets coach Robert Sala said, via Simini. Brees really wasn't full Brees until right around the midpoint of the season, and he was still producing. 
This will be take two with Aaron Rodgers for the Jets, who had huge expectations last season, but lost their starting quarterback to a torn Achilles on the first drive of Monday night football against the Buffalo Bills. This year, they will be on the Monday night football stage once again, but on the road in the game against the 49ers. The 49ers are arguably the most talented team top to bottom in the NFL, and beating them on the road will be a tall task. It would be a huge statement from the Jets if they can come away with an upset, however. It would show that New York could compete with the most talented teams in the NFL. Health will be a key for the Jets, but on paper, they should be a very competitive team this season. Batco on Brandon Ix mentality for Steelers, I'd come in as top dog over George Pickens. Brandon Ayuk may have mentioned the Pittsburgh Steelers by name, but I wouldn't rush out for that black and gold jersey. The San Francisco wide receiver still handicapped his future team in favor of the 49ers. He even named the Washington Commanders ahead of the Steelers. But the case for Pittsburgh remains alive, perhaps for both sides, certainly for Ayuk, unless it's just a bargaining chip. Anywhere he goes, Ayuk knows he is going there to be the top target, if he leaves. He probably holds that role in San Francisco, but he has to share a lot there. They are already paying Debo Samuel, and they just drafted another wide receiver in the first round. With the Steelers, all they have is George Pickens, and Brian Batko doesn't think he sees that as a threat. Ayuk is probably thinking, I'm a lot more accomplished, I've had a lot more success in the league so far than this guy. I'd come in as top dog right away, probably get paid, and have a nice little tenure here, he said on 93.7 The Fan yesterday. Over the past two seasons, Brandon Ayuk has caught 153 passes on 219 targets. He has recorded 2,357 receiving yards with 15 touchdowns. In comparison, George Pickens has caught 115 passes on 190 yards. He has recorded 1,941 receiving yards with nine touchdowns. You can compare and contrast their offenses and quarterback situations, but neither Pickens nor Ayuk have been ideally set up to succeed. You can argue that Brock Purdy is the best quarterback of the lot, but the 49ers don't throw the ball. They literally finished 32nd in the NFL in pass attempts, yet 4th in yards and 2nd in touchdowns. They rely on high-efficiency play, averaging 13.6 yards per reception. The Steelers averaged 10.6 yards per reception, for comparison. The Steelers obviously have a high opinion of George Pickens, empowering them to trade Deontay Johnson. But they probably do think that Brandon Ayuk is better, or at least more reliable from play to play. Both are very talented, but Aya clearly has the more impressive resume, in twice the time, granted. That's the issue with making this trade for the Steelers, because it's essentially committing to Aya over Pickens. Unless the Steelers are willing to pay huge sums to two wide receivers, Pickens is likely going to leave after 2025. And what if he develops into a top wide receiver by then? Pickens clearly suffered from the quality of quarterback play the last two seasons, primarily with Kenny Pickett. The Steelers turned over the entire quarterback room, led now by Russell Wilson. But how do we evaluate the impact of Brock Purdy on Ajax numbers? How do we quantify the Kyle Shanahan system versus the Matt Canada calamity? And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon Ajax? Leave your opinion in the comments.